Namaste Sarasati Deve Kauravani Precharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya De Satarine Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atvaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare All right, so we were still finishing the purport of mantra number 11, right? We're, we're here studying the Ishopanishad at the level of Bhakti Shastri. And in the last class, we were looking at mantra number 11. We nearly completed the purport. So we will just begin by reciting that mantra. Someone would like to chant for us? Someone would like to lead the chanting? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna. Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Go ahead. Can you read Maharaj? Vidyam cha avidyam cha yas. Vidyam avidyam cha yas. Vidyam cha yas. Tadvedhubhyam saha. Tad Vedo Bayam Saha Avidyaya Vityam Tirva Avidyaya Vityam Tirva Vidyaya Mridam Asnate Vidyaya Mridam Asnate You can read the translation Prabhu. One who can learn the process of missions and that of the transcendental knowledge side by side can transcend the influence of repeated birth and death and enjoy the full blessings of immortality. Okay, so we're going through the purport and uh, we're discussing about the importance, the balance between the material and the spiritual. So this verse brings out that need for a balance, that we cannot neglect material knowledge. We have to also cultivate knowledge of the material world, proper knowledge, how to live in this world. At the same time, we shouldn't become too much affected by the material world. We shouldn't become too much absorbed in this material energy. But we do have to know something about the material world, the nature of the material body, we have to know how to be able to take care of it. All of this is important. So we have to have, we have to culture both vidya and avidya. Sometimes people misunderstand and they think this means we should go out and enjoy the material world. Sometimes people even argue, they say that, uh, let, let me enjoy the material world first. Then I'll become a devotee after I've enjoyed the material world. So when Prabhupada heard this, he said that would mean the pig will be the best devotee. Because the pigs are enjoying, they're having maximum sense gratification, filling their bellies and satisfying their genital. In this way, they're, they're, they're very happy. But of course, we, we don't see pigs becoming devotees. So foolish people argue like this. They have so many foolish arguments why they don't want to surrender to Krishna. And so this is the nature of the avidya potency that covers up their intelligence. They cannot understand the real goal of life. All right, so uh, Prabhupada was explaining to us in his purport how uh, the aim of vidya, just wait, let me see here, 
The guaranteed path to the aim of Vidya is described by Rupa Goswami in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, which we have presented as in, in English nectar of devotion. The culture of Vidya is summarized in Srimad Bhagavatam in the following words. Tasmadekena manasa bhagavan tatvatam pati shrotavya kirtitavyas cha dhyaya pujas cha nityada. Therefore, with one pointed attention, one should constantly hear about, glorify, remember, and worship the personality of Godhead, who is the protector of the devotees. Unless religion, economic development, and sense gratification aim towards the attainment of devotional service to the Lord, they are all simply different forms of neshines, as Sri Upanishad indicates in the following mantras. <laughs> so, we're, of course, we're going to hear a few more mantras in this regard. So, Prabhupada is pointing out, there's no harm in sense gratification and religion, economic development. These things are, it's not that they're unnecessary. There's no harm in these things, but they should help us it, it, it become, they become perfect when they're able to help us to develop our Krishna consciousness, if they help us to become more devoted to the Supreme Lord, then it's good. But without Krishna consciousness, just like Srimad Bhagavatam says, duties executed by all men are only useless labor if they don't provoke attraction for the Personality of Godhead. So it's just become useless labor. We don't get any real benefit from it. Some temporary benefit, some flickering pleasure, some temporary enjoyment in the material world. But it's all temporary, it's so a waste of time. So this is the point, therefore we have to cultivate both the vidya and the avidya. Unfortunately, very less people are cultivating vidya. Everyone's so busy in the path of sense gratification and economic development and other things. So this is all nations. Okay, we'll go ahead. Are, are there any questions on this? Th those group of texts? That's at nine, uh, ten. 9, 10 and 11 all co covered the culture of knowledge and neshines. Any questions on them at all? If there are no questions, we'll move ahead to Mantra 12. Prabhu, would you like to chant for us again, Prabhu, the person who chanted before? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Verse number 12. Andam tama pravishyanti. Andam tama pravishyanti. Ye asambodam upasate. Ye sambodam upasate. Tato buya ivate tamo. Tato buya ivate tamo. Yayu sambodyam rataha. Yayu sambodyam rataha. And read the translation. Those who are engaged in the worship of demigods enter into the darkest region of ignorance, and still more so do the worshippers of the impersonal absolute. So after hearing about culture of knowledge dif and different group degrees, now we're going to hear about worship, worship of the absolute and worship of the relative will be compared. Would you like to go ahead, Prabhu, and, and read the first paragraph? Hare Krishna Maharaj. The Sanskrit word asambhuti refers to those who have no independent existence. Sambhuti is the absolute personality of Godhead, who is absolutely independent of everything. In the Bhagavad Gita 10.2, the absolute personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna states, Name Vidu Suragana. Prabhavam na Mahashya Akam Adirhi Devana 
Magashinam Cha Sarvasha. Neither the hosts of demigod nor great sages know my origin or opulence. For in every respect I am the source of the demigods and sages. Thus Krishna is the origin of the powers delegated to demigods, great sages and mystics. Although they are endowed with great powers, these powers are limited and thus it is very difficult for them to know how Krishna himself appears by his own internal potency in the form of a man. Thank you. So, how many demigods are there? Do you remember? 33 crores. Right, yes. And here we, we hear Prabhupada quoting this verse from the Bhagavad Gita, how even the demigods and the great sages, that they cannot understand Krishna. Krishna's beyond their understanding because he's the source of the demigods and sages. Just like the young child comes to the parents and they want to understand, where do I come from? <laughs> you know, what can the child understand? And so in the same way, the demigods and the great sages, they try to understand Krishna. But Krishna is beyond their understanding also. Because Krishna is the Supreme Lord. He's the Lord of everything. So his, Prabhupada introduces this word, asambhuti, no independent existence, and sambhuti. Sambhuti meaning Krishna, the absolute personality of Godhead. He is completely independent of everything. Hmm? And first verse of Srimad Bhagavatam is also mentioned how the Lord is fully independent. We are not. We are fully dependent. We are dependent on so many things in the material energy. But Krishna is the origin of all of these things. So although the great sages are very powerful, their power is limited. And Krishna himself appears by his own internal potency in the form of a man. So, what does Krishna say in the Bhagavad Gita about that? How does it affect people? Because he's coming in the form of a man. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Naham Prakasha Sarvasya Yoga Maya Samadha well, Odoyam Abhijanati well, well, here we see Krishna is manifest, but what's happening? Krishna is appearing as a man, but what's happening? What are people thinking? It is normal person. Yes, he's under the illusion. they're thinking he's an ordinary person, right? Yes. Ordinary people, what happens to them? They're under illusion, as you say. Also, what happens? They grow old, they get disease, and they die. Right? But Krishna said, no, no, I am never man. Krishna says, the foolish mock at me, descending amongst them like a human being. Do you know the rest of that verse? I forgot Maharaj. Anybody know? The foolish mock at me, descending amongst them like a human being. They do not know. Do not. Anybody? They do not know my transcendental nature and my supreme dominion over all that be. Right? Hmm? Yes? How are you using this verse? What is your point? 
because the Bahawal Krishna says, uh, after many, many births, and the real intelligent person uh, 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 understood me, I am the cause of all causes and surrender unto me. So he is Mahatma. Well, yes, but usually this, we use this verse to indicate the process of knowledge, that by the process of knowledge one can come to understand Krishna. One who is actually knowledge, like the goal of knowledge, one who is actually in knowledge surrenders to me. So generally we will use that verse in that manner. Is it uh, Aham Prabhu, Prabhu Aham Prabhu. Uh, what is the trend? That meaning that uh, I am never manifest to the foolish and the unintelligent. For, for them I am covered by my yoga maya, right? Yes. Okay, so that verse is describing Krishna doesn't, doesn't reveal himself to, he only reveals himself to devotees. He doesn't reveal himself to the foolish and the unintelligent. So, yeah, in some ways it, it, it's all right, it, it's a suitable verse. Because they think Krishna is an ordinary man, but the yes. Uh huh. Police deride me when I descend in the human form. They do not know my transcendental nature as the supreme Lord of all that be. Thank you. Yes, right. Yeah, they don't know my transcendental nature. They think, Krishna says, they think I'm just an ordinary person. But actually what's happening, Krishna is appearing in his own spiritual body. He, do, he doesn't grow old, although he was in the world more than a hundred years. He didn't grow old, he's still like a young man. And his birth was not at all ordinary, very special birth. In the course of his life he performed so many wonderful activities, different leelas. And at the end, when he completed his pastimes, then he arranged a special trick to fool the, the non-believers, to fool the atheists. He arranged to leave a false a, a maya form. Just like when Ravan kidnapped Mother Sita, Ravan actually didn't take Mother Sita, but he took a maya Sita, an illusory form of Mother Sita. Mother Sita is the goddess of fortune and she could never be touched by a demon like Ravan. But the Lord arranged a maya form of Sita to be taken away by Ravan. And similarly, when Krishna departed from this world, you know, Krishna, they say, oh, he got hit in the foot by an arrow. Somebody gets hit in the foot, is it going to kill them? You know, we never heard of this, you know, you get hit in the foot, it's going to kill. So it's all very strange. But it was Krishna's trick. He left a maya form to fool the atheists. And people will say, this is Krishna's, this is where Krishna's body was cremated and his ashes are here. And like this, all, all foolish people. They don't understand the transcendental nature of Krishna, that he appears in his transcendental form. Okay, we'll go ahead. Someone else like to read, please? <coughs> Yes, Hare Krishna, go ahead. Many philosophers and great rishis or mystics try to distinguish and the absolute form 
the relative by that tiny brain power this can only help them reach the negative conception of the absolute without realizing any positive trace of the absolute definition of the absolute by negation is not complete such negative definitions lead one to create a concept of one's own thus one imagines that the absolute must be formless and without qualities such negative qualities are simply the reversals of relative material qualities and are therefore also relative by conceiving of absolute in this way one can at the utmost reach the impersonal exclusions of god known as brahman but one cannot make further progress to bhagwan the personality of god hai hare krishna thank you okay so we're hearing about different ways of understanding god and prabhupada talks philosophers great mystics they distinguish the absolute from the relative the absolute who is that absolute this concept of absolute yes lord shri krishna the absolute prabhupada in the, if you look in the uh, preface or introduction there of the Srimad Bhagavatam, Prabhupada speaks about the Absolute Truth and he explains the concept of the Absolute is higher than the concept of the simply God. Because if you speak about God, then there's so many gods. There's a the God of rain, there's a the God of wind, there's a the God of fire, there's a the God of wealth. You know, we have so many gods. But there's only one absolute truth. Therefore, Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Mataparataram nanyat kinchidasti dhananjaya. There is no truth superior to me. Everything rests on me, just like, who knows? Somebody can. Huh? Understand. Understand. Yes, yes, Mataji. Thank you, Mataji. Yes, perils are strung on a thread. Thank you, Mataji. Now, so that's the example Krishna gives. So Krishna says, "There's no truth superior to me. Nobody else ever says that. Lord Shiva never says that. Lord Brahma never says that. Ganesh never says that. Durga never says that." There are so many gods. There's only one supreme God above everyone. Lord Krishna says that himself in the Bhagavad Gita. A very powerful statement there. So Krishna is the absolute truth. But people try to understand the absolute. The, how do they try to understand? Without realizing any trace of the absolute. They, what do they do? They, they have this... They try to understand the absolute truth by the negative conception. They say, God cannot be, he cannot have a form. Why? Because I have a form. So if God has a form, he must be like me. God cannot, he cannot be a person because I'm a person. So if God is a person, he must be a person like me. He must be also imperfect. So they, they think like that. They try to apply that kind of thinking to understanding God. So you can never understand God in that way. This is called the process of negation. And that is why you hear so many of these statements, you know, that God has no form, he has no arms, he has no legs, he cannot see, he cannot hear. Well, so they think God is deaf, God is dumb. God is blind, God is lame. They're thinking like this. This is their offense. You see, when you try to understand God with our limited thinking, then we'll never be successful. So the definition of the Absolute by negation will never be successful. Yes, God is not a person, not a person like us, but He is a person. But not like we are a person. He's not a limited person. He's a perfect person. We are imperfect. 
So negative definitions lead one to create a concept of our own. People imagine God. They, they have their own ideas about God. Oh, God is light. God is, God is energy. This is how they understand God. And they think, oh, he cannot have qualities because if he has qualities, he must be imperfect. So all of these ways of thinking like this, this is all the negation which is done by Mayavadis. Trying to understand God in this way will always be a failure. And at the best, the very best result they can get is they could go to the impersonal Brahman, up to the Brahma Jyoti. But they could never properly understand the real conception of God. It's beyond their brain. Okay, we'll go ahead. Another, another man can read, please. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Such, such mental speculators do not know that the absolute personality of Godhead is Krishna, that the impersonal Brahma is the daring effulgence of his transcendental body, or that the Paramatma, the Super Soul, is his all-pervading plenary representation. Nor do they know that Krishna has his eternal form with his transcendental qualities of eternal bliss and knowledge. The dependent demigods and great sages imperfectly consider him to be a powerful demigod and they consider the Brahma emergence, effulgence to be the absolute truth. But the devotees of Krishna, by dint of their surrendering unto him, and their unalloyed devotion can know that he is the absolute person and that everything emanates from him. Such devotees continuously render loving service unto Krishna, the fountainhead of everything. Thank you. So Prabhu, you can tell me what are the different phases of different ways in which we can understand the absolute truth? How do we, how can, what are the different realizations? Generally, there are three levels of realization. Do you know what they are? The by self realization, uh, Maharaj. Sorry? By realizing self. Yes, we want you. No, okay. The Krishna is there in our heart. That yeah. is the first realization we should do. Well, we want to understand God. Yes, the absolute truth, different, three different levels of realization of God is the absolute truth. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Yeah, it is the Bhagavatam Shloka which can be found. Vadanti tat tatva vidas tatva makhyana matvayan brahmeti paramatmeti bhagavaniti shabdhati. Yes. Thank you very much. Can you give the translation? Yeah, so the knowers of the truth hereby declare that uh, uh, there are uh, the, abs the absolute truth can be realized in three different three stages. Uh, the first one is Brahman, which is uh, the uh, uh, formless uh, realization, which is the effulgence of the Lord Himself. Okay, so yes. this Brahman realization is realization of what potency of the Lord? Uh, the Sat. Sat, yes. yes. Sat, right. Meaning eternality. Eternal, yes. Go ahead. And then? Uh, then the second stage is the Paramatma realization. Yes. Uh, uh, so, which is the uh, that the Paramatma has a shape. So, you know, that, that indicates that Paramatma has a shape uh -huh. and it is uh, 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 situated in everybody's heart. Uh, and the third, the, the highest stage of realization is Bhagavan, where uh, he, he is there with, uh, uh, the Absolute is there with all his potencies. All right. Potencies. So can, uh, is Paramatma, what realization of the potency of the Lord is that? Yeah, it is the... Uh, uh, chit, chit, right. Knowledge potency, right. And then, and then Bhagavan? Okay. So, Bra the Lord is Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagavan. So can we worship the Brahman, can we 
worship the, the Brahman and the Paramatma like we worship Bhagavan? Maharaj, uh, like the when uh, when the, the uh, uh, it is always uh, like when we know that uh, the Lord has a form and it, uh, He is uh, there with all His potencies. We should worship uh, the Lord in, with His all full potencies, which is uh, the Bhagavan. So people do, uh, but that is the first and second stage of realization. If people are doing it on Brahman and Paramatma, then that is the st stage of realization which they are. Once we understand the knowledge, we should uh, worship the highest uh, day, which is the Bhagavan. Yes, we should understand, if you're going to worship the Brahman and the Paramatma, you're not going to get any Ananda. The Ananda only comes in worship of the Bhagavan. There's no bliss in the Brahman or the Paramatma. The bliss is in Bhag with Bhagavan. That's one point, right? Another point is the form of the, this Brahman feature of the Lord is impersonal. So how can we have any devotion for something which is without personality? You cannot. You cannot have any devotion for something which is without personality. So there's no question of worshipping Brahman. What about Paramatma? The problem with Paramatma is Paramatma is only here in the material world. Paramatma's function is here in the material world. There's no Paramatma in the spiritual world. When we go to the spiritual world, the Lord is there as Bhagavan. So Paramatma's relation, his function only relates to the material realm. So limited. So we want to cultivate devotion, as you said, should be for the Bhagavan feature, which is com that will give us full bliss, and that is an eternal relationship, loving relationship. This is the meaning of real bhakti. Is it clear, everyone? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, we'll go ahead. Maharaji can read now. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna. It is stated in the Bhagavad Gita 7.23 that the worshippers of the demigod can go to the planet of demigods. The moon worshipper can go to moon. The sun worshippers. No, just a minute. I, I, I think, I don't know. It's, my text is different from this. Okay, sorry, Maharaj. In the Bhagavad Gita 7.20.23, it is said that only unintelligent, bewildered persons driven by the strong desire for sense gratification worship the demigods for the temporary relief of temporary problems. Since the living being is materially entangled, he has to be rebuilt from material bondage eternally. Entirely. To permanent relief on the spiritual plane, where eternal bliss, life, and knowledge exist. Sri Ishopanishad therefore instructs that we should not seek temporary relief of our difficulties by worshipping the dependent demigods who can bestow only temporary benefits. Rather, we must worship the absolute personality of Godhead Krishna, who is all attractive and who can bestow upon us complete freedom from material bondage by taking us back to home, back to Godhead. So can the demigods take us back to Godhead? No. Why not? Uh, because they are in the material world and they do not have that uh, uh, capacity or they are not Bhagwan who can give us liberation. Yes. Well, can we worship them as a part of the Bhagavan? A tricky question, eh? Uh, we should worship Tamil God, but in relationship to the Lord Sri Krishna. Yes, right. 
We can worship demigods in relation to Lord Krishna. If we worship them, we have to understand how they are, tiny part of Lord Krishna. And so there are some devotees who did like that. I think it was Bharat Maharaj that he was worshipping demigods, making offerings, sacrifices to demigods, understanding them as a part of the Supreme Lord. In the Brihad Bhagavatam Rita by Sanatana Goswami, I was just reading recently, they mentioned there, you can worship a blade of grass. You can take a blade of grass and worship it, understanding that the Lord is there in the blade of grass. So if you worship the demigods, understanding that the Lord is there in the heart of the demigods, along with the jiva, there's no harm. You can do it. But it's much easier to directly worship the Supreme Lord. So the, the, the failings of demigod worship is described here, right? What are some of the... What is, what is the results of worshipping demigods, Maharajji? What do we get when we worship? Uh, in Bhagavad Gita 9.25, Yanti Deva Vrata Deva Nyan Pitrum Yanti Pitru Vrata Bhutani Yanti Bhujitya Yanti Madhya Jena Upimam. Those who worship the demigods, they go to their planet to worship to Pitaras, they go to their. And they who worship the ghost, they go to their planet. And who worship me, they come to my abode. So, what happens then if we go to demigod planets? We can enjoy there for some time? We have time. to come back again. Then we have we... to be in material world only. Okay. And generally, so what are the results of worshipping demigods? Only fruitive activity, material, temporary desires may be fulfilled. Right. So what kind of people worship the demigods? Artha Artharthi. Mm. <laughs> yeah, people who have material desires, right? People with material desires, they worship the demigod. Foolish, less intelligent people, less intelligent, they're described as alpa medashaha, small intelligence, small brain. Why? Because the results are limited and temporary. You're not going to get real benefit, no lasting benefit from worship of the demigods. But it's very easy to please the demigods. People may say, very easy to please the demigods, very difficult to please Krishna. Very quick I can get result from the demigods. So what will you say? Because Demigods are doing their jobs, duties, and uh, maybe Lord Shri Krishna is like our mother who knows when and what my child will be needed. What is the best for my child? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, uh, we have to understand. You may be able to please the demigods very easily, you can anger them also very easily. Yes. You should be very careful. And demigods, they will give you blessings without thinking if it's actually good for you. But Lord Krishna, He will think very carefully. He won't give so quickly because He's thinking, is this really good for this person? Is this really going to help them? So, which is better? You approach someone who's more thoughtful, who's more caring, who really cares about a demigods, they'll just give you they'll just give the blessing. So oh, okay. He's worshipping me, very good. They're happy. Yes, so be very cautious when you worship the devas. Okay, we'll go ahead. Another marriage, please read. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna. It is stated in the Bhagavad Gita 7.23 that the worshippers of the demigods can go to the planets of the demigods. The moon worshippers can go to the moon, the sun worshippers to the sun, etc. Modern scientists are now venturing to the moon with the help of rockets. But the, this is not really a new attempt. 
with their advanced consciousness. And to leave the planets, weather spaceships. In the Vedic scriptures, it is said that one can reach other planets by in one of these three ways. Most common way is by worshiping the earth of them. In Something wrong there? Hare Krishna. What happened? Lines. Connection problem, Maharaj. Okay. So someone else please continue reading. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna. With their advanced consciousness, human beings are naturally inclined to travel in outer space and to reach other planets either by spaceships, mystic powers, or demigod worship. In the Vedic scriptures, it is said that one can reach other planets by any one of, of these three ways. But the most common way is by worshipping the demigod residing over a particular planet. In this way, one can reach the moon planet, the sun planet, and even Brahmaloka, the topmost planet in this universe. However, all planets in the material universe are temporary residences. The only permanent planets are the Vaikuntha Lokas. These are found in the spiritual sky, where the personality of God himself predominates. As Lord Sri Krishna states in the Bhagavad Gita 8.16, A Brahma Bhuvana Loka Punaravartino Archana Ma Mupeti Kaunteya Punar Charmana Vidyati. Read the translation. From the highest planet in the material world down to the lowest, all are places of misery wherein repeated birth and death take place, but one who attains my abode, O son of Kunti, never takes birth again. So is Vaikuntha the abode of the Lord? Yes, Maharaj. Uh, they come under uh, the spiritual world, the permanent. The above the Vaikuntha planets, there is a Goloka, the Krishna planet. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah. And what about Brahma Loka? Where is that? Brahmaloka Brahma uh, is the highest uh, planet of these four, uh, 14 material worlds, the topmost one. That also temporary comes from the material world. So Brahma also has a material body, is it? He also dies? Yes, yes Maharaj. He lives only 100 years. Okay. All right. Thank you. Very good. We'll go ahead. Yes, someone else can read, please. Sri Shupanishad. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna. Nation points out one who worships the demigods and attains to the material planets still remains in the darkest region of the universe. The whole universe is covered by the gigantic material elements. It is just like a coconut covered by a shell and half filled with water. Since its covering is airtight, the darkness within is dense and therefore the sun and the moon are required for illumination. Outside the universe is the vast and unlimited Brahma Jyoti expansion which is filled with Vaikuntha Lokas. The biggest and highest planet in the Brahma Jyoti is Krishna Loka or Goloka Vrindavana where the Supreme Personality of Godhead Shri Krishna himself resides. Lord Shri Krishna never leaves Krishna Loka. Although he dwells there with his eternal associates, he is omnipresent throughout the complete material and spiritual cosmic manifestations. This fact has already been explained in Mantra 4. The Lord is present everywhere just like the sun, yet he is situated in one place just as the sun is situated in its own undeviating orbit. So can you tell us how is it the Lord is everywhere? How is it is present everywhere? As Paramatma Maharaj. Okay, it's Paramatma. And any other? Uh, his. It, he never leaves Krishna Loka. But we heard that he comes in this world. 
He comes, you know, we hear yada yada he dan mashya, right? So is, is that not Krishna? Who's coming? Yes, Krishna only in Virat. But it says he doesn't leave Krishna Loka, so how can he come here? He can be the only Putin. Huh? Is it Amaya Krishna who comes? Is it Amaya Krishna? Like I said, Ravan took Amaya Sita away. So maybe it's Amaya Krishna who comes here. No. Hmm? What happens? Yes? Same Krishna, same Krishna, Lord Krishna himself becomes one. Yes. Right. He's everywhere. Very good. You're right. It's Krishna himself, he comes. That he can, exp he can be in Goloka and at the same time he can also come here if he wants. He has that power. Just like he married 16,100 queens and he married them all at the same time. And he, was sat, he sat in the fire yagya with each of them at the same time. And he went to each of their palaces, he would stay in each of their palaces with them. But then he would come out and 16,100 Krishnas would become again one Krishna and he would go to the Siddharma Sabha. So Krishna could do these things. He can expand, just like when Brahma stole away the cows and the cowherd boys. Krishna could become the cows and the cowherd boys. Krishna himself became the cows and the cowherd boys. So Krishna has that kind of potency. All right, so we're hearing about the universe. The universe is described to be like a coconut, right? How many coconuts are there in the material world? How many universes? Fourteen. Hmm? Many, many. Yeah, the unlimited. There's so many. Unlimited. unlimited. So many universes in the material world. And what's the portion of the what portion of the spiritual sky is the material world? Do you know? Deep marriage. Yes. One fourth and the rest is right. Material world is one fourth. Right. The spiritual world is three fourth. So this universe is very dark. It's like a coconut, inside a coconut, very dark. So where do we get light from? From the sun and the moon. Where, where does the sun get the light from? From uh, Lord himself, Krishna. From, the, from Krishna's effulgence, right? The Brahma Jyoti. Yeah. And, and that's uh, in, the, in the form of the sun. And then the moon is the reflection of the sun. And this way... Okay, the highest planets, so you've got the Vaikuntha, the spiritual world. Okay, very good. We heard about Mantra 4. What, what was it said in Mantra 4? Do you remember what we studied? Yeah, um, uh, Krishna, not only Krishna stays in his own planet, Krishna Loka. Mantra 4, it said... Yeah. Uh, even demons cannot reach him and he is uh, faster than our mind. Yes, right, yes. Swifter than the mind. He can c overcome all, of the, all others running. People are running but they can't catch him. Just like uh, when Krishna was fighting Jarasandha and Kalasambhav, that Kalasambhav he came running after Krishna. Right? And Krishna... Krishna got the name Ranchur because he left the battlefield and that Kalasambhav came after running after Krishna, he couldn't catch him. And then he got, Krishna went in the cave and he got burned to ashes by, who was it? Who was laying there sleeping and woke him up? Muchikunda. Muchikunda, yes, very good. Okay, well go ahead. Uh, come back to the man to read the problems of life. Some man. 
Yes, the problems of the life cannot be solved simply by going to the moon planet or some other planet above or below it. Therefore, Sri Ishwanivra advises us not to bother with any destination within the dark material universe but to try to get out of it and reach to the affluent kingdom of God. There may be, there are many pseudo worshippers who become religionist, religionist only for the sake of the name and fame. Such pseudo religionists do not wish to get out of the universe and reach the spiritual, spiritual sky. Spiritual sky. The, the, they only want to maintain the status quo in the material world under the grab of worshipping the Lord. The atheist, uh, the atheist and the impersonalist leads such foolish pseudo religionists into the darkest really, uh, regions by preaching the cult of atheism. The atheist directly denies the existence of the supreme personality of Godhead, and the impersonality supports the atheist by the stressing the impersonalist aspect of the supreme Lord. Thus far, we have not come across. Uh, any mantra in Sri Iso Krishna in which the Supreme Personality of Godhead is denied. It is said that it is said that he can run faster than anyone. Those who are those who are running after other planets are certainly a person. If the Lord can run faster than all of them, can he be impersonal? The impersonal conception of the Supreme Lord is another form of ignorance arising from the imperfect <coughs> Of the absolute truth. Thank you, Prabhu. Okay. So Prabhupada is giving us some arguments here against the uh, atheistic philosophers because, you know, atheism is very prominent in the world today. Even though we're preaching Krishna consciousness and trying to distribute books, we come across a lot of atheism. Even when you go to universities and colleges, you have to confront atheists, big atheists. They even have atheistic society. Just like we have our Bhakti Yoga society, they have their atheist society. And so we're trying to explain to people the reality of life. They're trying to solve the problems of the world by their technology. Prabhupada talks about them going to the moon. Did they go to the moon? Did they, did they go to the moon? What did they bring? No what did they bring back? What What did they say they brought back from the moon? You don't moon know. Tank? Yeah, they brought some rocks. Yeah. Some rocks from the moon. They say that's what they said anyway. They said they brought some rocks from the moon. Yeah. We don't believe that you know, they went to the moon, but you know, even if they did, what good did it do? They didn't do any good. They didn't get anywhere, didn't learn anything. So how should you go if you want to go to the moon? How do you go? What is the proper way to go? How should you go to the moon? Just worship the moon god? Yeah, that's one way. You can worship the moon god. Right? The moon is a higher planet. So, pious activities. You want to go to the moon planet or the sun planet, you have to do a lot of pious activities by pi material piety. You can go there. As you say, worship the moon god or worship the sun god. Like that, you can go to the moon. But is it going to get us very far? It's not going to solve the problem of life. Because you're still in the material world. So Prabhupada said, Ishupanishad says, don't bother with that. Don't waste your time. Try to get out of this material world. Don't just try to be comfortable in the world. Prabhupada gives an example, just like the man is in the prison. He should think how to get out of the prison. He shouldn't want to just try to be comfortable in the prison. He should think how to get out. So Prabhupada talks about these two philosophers, atheism and impersonalism. Both 
big foolish people. So we're preaching, how, we, how can we defeat them? We're preaching the message of Lord Chaitanya, trying to overcome this. Prabhupada says that <laughs> the, preaching the cult of atheism, the pseudo-religionists preach the cult of atheism. Yeah, they actually make, they try to make propaganda against God. They tell people, don't be so foolish, why should you believe in God? You never saw Him, He's not there, nobody ever saw Him. So the atheists, they directly deny the existence of God. And the impersonalists, they support the atheists. Because they're saying, what, what are the impersonalists saying? What is their, why do they support the atheism? Someone tell me. According to the Hare Krishna Maharaj, according to them, Lord do not have a form. Yeah, they say God. But so, so they say, what is the absolute then? And their, and their understanding, what is the absolute? Uh, Brahma Jyoti. Yeah, the Brahman, simply Brahman, right? The impersonal Brahman, right? They're thinking God has no form. So this is also another form of atheism. And the same with Buddhism. What do the Buddhists say? The, the Buddhists don't say Buddha's God. They don't say that. Buddhists will never say Buddha's God. They say Buddha's Buddha. He's not man, he's not God, he's Buddha. So what, what do the Buddhists teach? They will simply teach what? Do you know? What do the Buddhists teach? Voidism. Voidism, right. That you're, you're not real. The world is not real. Nothing is real. So what should you do? Right? If everything is void, then what should you do? Anybody can say, what are you going to do? Everything is void, so what should you do? Hare Krishna Maharaj, I can just try, we can be in peace, just be in peace. <laughs> yeah, you don't do anything, right? Sit, and do nothing. Yeah, nothing, because everything is not real, nothing is real. You're not real, you don't exist. You go to a Buddhist temple, they have a dead body there. You sit and look at the dead body, they say, this is, oh, this is the end, this is reality. Just simply the dead body. It's, nothing is real. So they sit and they meditate like that. The meditation, you go in a Buddhist temple, they have pictures of skeletons on the, on the temple wall. They don't put pictures of Krishna or Buddha, they put pictures of a skeleton and meditate on this is what we are. We're just simply these bones, we're like, this is, everything is void, nothing is real. So don't do anything, just sit and meditate. That's all they do. You go to a Buddhist temple for a retreat, meditate. Meditation and then maybe lunch, take a little lunch and then again meditation. <laughs> you know, this is their program. Nothing. Don't talk to anybody. Don't come here. Don't talk to people. Just sit and be quiet. Prabhu said peace, right? Pe they think that is peace. They do not know what is real peace. The mind is still there. The mind is still active. Where is the peace? We have our own formula for peace in Bhagavad Gita. That is there. But what they think, they're, they're, they trick themselves into thinking peace. Okay, so atheism, impersonalism, the, all of these things we're trying to preach against by preaching the message of Lord Chaitanya. So Prabhupada said this impersonalism, another ignorance. Go ahead, please read. Marriage is again. Who has not read? Ha Hare Krishna. Yes, Hare Krishna. The ignorant 
pseudo religionist and the manufacturers of so called incarnations who directly violate the basic injunctions are liable to enter into the darkest region of the universe because they mislead those who follow them these impersonalists generally pose themselves as incarnations of god to foolish persons who have no knowledge of basic wisdom if such foolish men have any knowledge at all it is more dangerous in their hands than ignorance ignorance itself such impersonalists do not even worship the devi gods according to the scriptural recommendations in the scriptures there are recommendations for worshiping demi gods under certain circumstances but at the same time these scriptures state that there is normally no need for this in the bhagavad gita 7.23 it is clearly stated that the results derived from worshiping the demi gods are not permanent since the entire material universe is impermanent whatever is achieved within the darkness of material existence is also impermanent the question is how to obtain real and permanent life okay ma thank you manaji so uh, can you tell me what is this they manufacture incarnations of god how do they do this they, they go to the factory or something the prophet said they're manufacturing incarnations of god Some people will act as they are the God. Amen. Okay. They claim they to be they God. They claim that they are, they are the incarnation of the God. And what, how do they support their claim? Some magic they will show. Maybe some magic show? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah, if you go to Kumbha Mela, when there's a Kumbha Mela, you often see many incarnations of God. <laughs> they are, or at least their followers are giving out pamphlets, come and meet the incarnation of God, Kali Yuga Avatar. But Prabhupada explains these people are usually impersonalists. He said, they're more dangerous. Why are they more dangerous than ignorance? Because uh, these people are claiming that they are God, so the uh, innocent people will believe in them and they will lead them into a wrong path. Yeah. So these people are more dangerous. Yeah. Foolish men have no knowledge at all. You get people, they come and they will preach. They will say things like, Oh, it's all right to eat fish. Fish is the fruit of the sea. So people hear this, they think, oh, very good. I can eat fish. I love fish. I'm so glad to hear I can eat fish. Right? So you get people like that. They become very popular because they support fish eating. And then so many other bogus philosophies they will teach. They will teach that God is a poor man. God is not, God is not Bhagavan, God is the poor man. Daridra Narayan, he's a poor man in the street. Only the poor men are God. The rich men, they're not God. And God is not God. But the poor man, he's become God. This, this, is, what, this is the kind of nonsense that is being taught. No, very dangerous because misleading people, giving people the wrong ideas. And Prabhupada explained, when they, even when they worship the demigods, they don't do it properly. They don't do it according to the scriptures. Just like in the scriptures it says, you want to eat meat, there's a process to do it. Right? You want to eat meat? You have to go before Goddess Kali on the dark moon night. Dark moon night means once in the month. So once in the month you go in front of Goddess Kali and you tell the goat, I'm going to kill you, in the future you can kill me. 
That's it. That's it. What you have to say, you have to, there's a mantra like that. I'm going to kill you because I want to eat the meat. You can, in the future you can kill me. So this is what they're supposed to do if they want to eat me. Of course, nowadays people, they don't, they just kill and they eat. So very sinful. So material world is very temporary, whatever is achieved is also temporary. So how to get real life, we're going to hear now. Yes, let's have another man read. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Prabhu. The Lord states that as soon as one reaches Him by the devotional service, which is one, of, one and only way to approach the personality of a Godhead, one attains complete freedom from the bondage of birth and death. In other words, the path of salvation from material clutches fully depend on the principles of knowledge and detachment gained from serving the Lord. The pseudo-religionists have neither knowledge nor detachment from material affairs, for most of them want to live in the golden shackles of material bondage under the shadow of philanthropic activities disguised as religious principles. By a fa false display of religious sentiments, they present a show of devotional service while indulging in all uh, sort of immoral activities. In this way, they pass as spiritual masters and devotees of God. Such violators of religious principle have no respect for the authoritative acharyas, the holy teachers in the strict discipline sections. They ignore the Vedic injections, Acharyo, pa, Acharyo Pasana, one must worship the Acharya and Krishna's statement in Bhagavad Gita 4.2 Ivam Parampara Praptam. This, this supreme science of God is received through the disciplic succession. Instead to mislead the people in general, they themselves become so-called Acharyas, but they do not even follow the principles of the Acharyas. Okay. Thank you, Prabhu. So some important points here. Uh, so, like few of the uh, non-devotees, they means those who are, uh, they are not into any sampradayas. Uh, they follow their own, uh, uh, means own concrete theory, and they they be, they become as an acharya and they do the preaching for others, which is not, uh, which is not from anywhere uh, in the disciplic successions. Yes, right. <laughs> they don't care for the disciplic succession. Okay, so as soon as one reaches him by devotional service, Prabhupada said, it's the only way to approach God. You have to, he's only approached by devotion, there's no other path. Not by karma, not by jnana, not by yoga, only by devotion. Now this is, and this way then we can actually find the way out of the will of birth and death. So then Prabhupada talks about the principle of devotion, uh, to get out of this material world, depends on the principles of knowledge and detachment. In other words, jnana and vairag. And there, we get this jnana and vairag, how do, how do, where does it come from? Uh, from the disciplic succession, from the acharya, basically from spiritual master. Well, we get it from serving, from doing service, by doing bhakti yoga. Where there is real bhakti, there will also be knowledge and detachment. The example is given in Srimad Bhagavatam, that just like when a hungry man eats food, when he eats food, he will also feel relief from hunger, and he will feel satisfaction and nourishment and strength in his body. It all comes about as he goes on eating. So in the same way, when one is actually doing devotional service, 
the results of devotional service should manifest and they manifest there in the form of the awakening of transcendental knowledge and also detachment from the material existence. So these two things, Gyan and Vairag, are like the sons of devotion. They're like the two children of devotion. So we don't have to separately acquire these things. We just simply have to practice devotion. We do our devotional service. We hear and we chant and we offer worship. And just by doing these things, we automatically develop, awaken transcendental knowledge about the Lord and about His existence and the nature of this world and the spiritual world. And we will also cultivate this detachment from whatever has no connection to Krishna. We lose our interest in the mundane. How much we are advancing in Krishna consciousness can be understood by how much we have lost our interest in the mundane, in the mundane things of life. How much are you still interested in the cricket results or the football scores or the politics or the stock market, all of these things, right? The detachment comes about simply by serving Krishna. So the pseudo-religionists, Prabhupada talks, what do they do? They work under the shadow of philanthropic activities. In other words, they like to do some social work and people think, oh, very good, they're helping the people. And it's disguised as some religious principle. So they make a show like this, eh? feeding the poor, doing welfare activities, you build a, a home or a hospital or a school. But this, these activities are material, they're not actually spiritual activities. Spiritual activities mean simply hearing, chanting, serving the Lord. And so this is what we learn from the, from the spiritual authorities. So Prabhupada talks, some people, they pose as the acharyas, they pose as spiritual masters. Because the important principle is acharyo pasana. You have, we have to worship the acharyas. Just like you see in our temples, every day we do Prabhupada Guru Puja. That is acharyo pasana. And people who go to Mongolati, sometimes they criticize us, they say, oh, it's gone, they just worship the Guru. Yeah, the first thing is they worship the Guru, and then we worship Krishna. So we, be, we begin at Mongolati, offering worship to the Guru, and then we worship Radha Madhava, then we worship Panchatattva, like that. But first thing is to worship the Guru, because from the Guru we got the knowledge. But they, these people, these so-called acharyas, they mislead them. They say, just worship me, no need to worship God. No need to keep pictures of God, you just keep my picture there. They will tell them like that. The position of their guru, like the guru himself has become everything. No, it's not like that. The guru himself is a humble servant, insignificant servant of the Lord. Okay, so where are we? Okay, these rogues. Yes? Correction of words. Yes. These rogues are the most dangerous element in human society. Because there is no religious government, they escape punishment by the law of the state. They cannot, however, escape the law of the Supreme, who has clearly declared in Bhagavad Gita that envious demons in the grab of religious propaganda shall be thrown into the darkest region of hell. Bhagavad Gita 16, 19-20. So the Ishwaganesh comes on confirmed that these pseudo religionists are heading towards the most ob obnoxious place in the universe after the completion of their spiritual master business, which they conduct simply for sense gratification. Okay. So it's a very powerful 
statement here by Srila Prabhupada at the end of this mantra. <laughs> so warning, the results of this, uh, these kind of activities, these pseudo-religionists, in other words, they're not actual religionists, but pretending to be, the false, false religionists. And so they're thrown into the darkest region of hell. So very dangerous situation. So we have to be able to recognize these things. We have to see the, the uh, we have to know what is, where is the genuine process and where is the false process. But ordinary people are not trained. They don't know. And they will simply judge who has got a lot of followers. Are they doing welfare work? Are they doing charity? They look like that. They look at material things. They don't hear how, how we should actually understand by hearing, hearing the message of the Acharyas. That's important. All right. Any questions? Anybody? Otherwise we can go on because we're supposed to cover two mantras today. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Prabhu. Uh, Maharaj, uh, we know that uh, spiritual sky, there is a Goloka and uh, other planets, this planetary systems, planets uh, like Dwaraka and all, uh, Vipaikunta. But the, uh, here in the material world, the Garbhodakshai Vishnu is present. So how to understand this is also a spiritual world? Yes. If you have that, well, Krishna is everywhere. You can say, so for, for the pure devotee, he sees everywhere as a spiritual world. He doesn't see any difference between this or that. Because everywhere he sees Krishna. So that is the thinking of the Uttama Adhikari. He can see the Lord everywhere in everything. So he doesn't need to go anywhere. He's, you know, for those who've taken shelter of Lord Narayan, there's no difference between heaven and hell and liberation. It's all the same. Because wherever he goes, he sees the Lord and he's going to engage in devotional service. Wherever you put him. Prabhupada gives the example. He said, just like you have that machine for threshing the rice. When they harvest the rice, they put the rice in, they will knock off the kernels. And so that machine, wherever you have it, you have it in North India or South India or you take it to the moon, it's still going to do the same work. So he said, devotees like that, wherever you put him, business is the same. Chanting Hare Krishna, read Bhagavad Gita, worship Krishna, because you see everywhere, Krishna and Krishna's service. So there's no difference, right? Garbha Daksha Vishnu is here in the universe. Shiro Daksha Vishnu is also here everywhere, expanded everywhere in everyone's heart, in every atom. So everything. Shankaracharya took the statement, Sarvam Kavidam Brahma. Everything is Brahman. Yes, everything is spirit. It's true. Everything is spirit. But there's the Supreme Brahman, right? Parabrahman. Krishna is the Parabrahman. We worship the Parabrahman. So Garpa Dakashai Vishnu, Karana Dakashai Vishnu, Shira Dakashai Vishnu, they're the Purusha avatars. But Krishna is the Swayam Bhagavan. You see, the worship. That there's some difference between the worship of Lord Narayan or Vishnu and the worship of Krishna. Why is it, you know, what's so special about Krishna? Why want to go to Krishna? Why not just worship Lord Narayan? If you read the Brihad Bhagavatam Rita, Sanatan Goswami's book, you know, he describes about Gop Kumar, how he went to Vaikuntha. He went to Vaikuntha and he met Lord Narayan, but it wasn't so fulfilling for him. 
because he was thinking about Vrindavan and he was thinking how when he meditates in Vrindavan, he meditates on Madangopal and Lord Madangopal embraces him and they joke together and they're very friendly. But when you go to Vaikuntha, Lord Narayan, the mood is more Aishwarya. So the worship of Vishnu is Vaidhi, Vaidhi Bhakti. But the worship of Krishna is more Braja Bhakti. It's more Raganuga Bhakti. Spontaneous devotion. So it's, there's some very special experiences which the devotees who worship Lord Krishna enjoy in the worship of Krishna, enjoy in their dealings with Krishna, which you don't get in the worship of Garbhodakashayi Vishnu. You know, you may worship Lord Vishnu, but it's not like worshipping Krishna, because the mood is Aishwarya, opulence. Everybody is very respectful, very, you know, and the Lord He's up on a big throne, he's above everyone, you know, and everybody is worshipping him. So the mood of Vaikuntha is all Dasyaras. You don't get Vatsalyaras or Sakyaras there or Madhuryaras. It's not there in Vaikuntha. That's only in Goloka. So you want to experience the, the higher rasas. You have to worship Krishna. You have to cultivate Braja Bhakti. Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune, she wanted to experience loving relationship with Krishna. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went down to Trichy and he met with the Sri Vaishnavas there and he was joking with them. He said, You know, you know, Lakshmi is a very chaste woman. She's very faithful to her husband, Lord Narayan. But why did she want to go with Krishna? So the Sri Vaishnava Balababata, he said to Lord Chaitanya, he said, Oh, please. <coughs> Excuse me. He said, stop joking with me. You know Lakshmi is a very chaste lady. Lord Krishna is not different from Lord Narayan. They're the same. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, yes, right. There's no difference. But why then did Lakshmi go to Vrindavan and she did austerities? Why did she go to Vrindavan and do austerities? She did this because she wanted to join Rasa Leela. She wanted to dance with Krishna in Rasa Leela, but she could not. Even though she did her austerities in Vrindavan, she did not get the opportunity to join the Rasa Leela. Why not? Why not? Because she's the goddess of fortune. She couldn't give up her opulences. She couldn't just become a cowherd woman in Vrindavan. You want to join Rasa Leela? First you have to become a gopi. Then you can be qualified. Hare Krishna, are we still in connection? Yes, Maharaj. Okay. Okay, good. So this should be understood. There's a difference, worshipping Krishna and worshipping Garbhodakshayi Vishnu. There's very special dealings between Krishna and his devotees, which are not there between Vishnu and his devotees. And that's why people are more attracted to worship the Lord there. Hmm. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. All right, so uh, we've been speaking about, uh, maybe we should have a little revision, what we covered so far. 
the first section. Well, first of all, we had the invocation mantra. Have you all learned the invocation mantra? Om Purnam Madha Purnam Idam Purnat Purnam Udhachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnam Ebhava Vasishyate So we spoke about the Lord as Purnam, right? Purnam meaning? Complete. Complete. Perfect. Completely perfect, right? Perfect and complete. And the example is, what the example is given in the verse? Even though so many complete units emanate from him, still he remains, he, he remains a complete balance. Complete. Yes, he still rem even though so many universes are coming from him, he still remains complete, the complete balance. So that is the unique nature of the Supreme Lord. But then we went on to the first section, the first three mantras. Uh, the first mantra particularly, very important. Isavashyam, oh, Isavashyam idam sarvam, yadkincha jagatyam jagat. Tena Yes, meaning. What is the summary of this understanding? Everything inanimate and inanimate that is within this universe is controlled and owned by the Lord. Therefore, then we should accept whatever the things necessary for uh, ourselves and we should uh, not uh, our quota, we should accept only our quota. Right, we should take our quota not, and not take more than that. Why? Because it's not belongs to us actually, it's right. to the Supreme Lord. Right, because it doesn't belong to us, it's not ours, we've no right. Yeah, just, so just take what we need. What is sufficient that's given to us. That is the important point. Tena chak, tena bunjita, magra. And if we go, if we work in that way, then what will happen? If we do like that, what is the result? Akarma. It will become a karma. Yes. And you do a karma, then what will happen? Hundred years you can live. Yeah, you live a long life. Yeah, live a long life, very good, yes. So, what kind of society is that, where people recognize God as the proprietor? What is the term? Ishavasya. Ishavasya society, right. God-centered. Ishavasya, meaning God-centered, right. God-centered. Yes, good, okay. So, and then we went on to hear, what happens when people don't work like that? What, what's the result? Man, yeah, right. They enter into darkness and ignorance. Right? Can the soul be killed? What is Admaha meaning? Yeah, killer of the, the soul. So, can this, what, can you explain to me the meaning, the killer of the soul, what's, what's happening? If, if, we are, if we are not doing uh, Isha Vasya principle, that means we are the, uh, indirectly we are the killer of the soul. Yes, right. Because we're denying the interest of the soul, the need of the soul. Okay, very good. So we will stop here and we'll meet this evening again and continue. Thank you very much, Srila Prabhupada Ki. Go back to Brinda Ki. Go back to Brinda Ki. Jai.